morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be here with you today, except that unfortunately, physically, I cannot be with you. So please accept all my apologies for this. Um, I just uh, would like uh, to use the opportunity of your kind invitation to uh, say a few words regarding uh, the European Innovation Council that I have the chance to uh, lead within the European Commission in DG Research and Innovation, uh, which is one of the main novelty, as you know, of the new and future uh, framework program for research and innovation horizon in Europe, but also uh, is a, a new uh, pilot at the end of the current framework program for research and innovation horizon 2020 at the request of the European Council in last summer. Uh, as you know, the society is moving fast. Uh, Europe has a lot of strengths, uh, especially in its capacity to uh, generate uh, knowledge, but remains with a number of weaknesses and in particular regarding the capacity to transform knowledge into future products, into future uh, innovation, and therefore in the capacity, thanks to uh, its strengths, to create jobs and growth. Uh, with the European Innovation Council, we would like to uh, tackle, in particular, these uh, main weaknesses, but also to build on our strengths regarding the generation of uh, emerging technologies and allows me to uh, start uh, with this first leg, if I can use this uh, word, uh, which is uh, our capacity and our strengths to uh, generate uh, future emerging technologies. In this area, Europe remains clearly one of the world leaders, but it's not because we are world leaders that we have to stop to invest. Uh, this is the reason why we thought very important to continue to propose to invest massively in uh, the uh, support to, stim to the stimulation of uh, future uh, radical science that can lead ultimately to a radical innovation. But with, in addition, in, in comparison to what we are doing uh, in, uh, up to now and in what we have done in the last uh, decade, uh, providing support in addition to uh, our teams that are generating these emerging technologies in order to uh, move gradually to a better use of the knowledge that is uh, generated. This is what we have called the EIC Pathfinder uh, and where we would like uh, to have uh, on one hand again a bottom-up approach but also a challenge-based approach, a top-down approach in areas that appear as very promising regarding the uh, emergence of new technology. You can cite, for example, of course, uh, artificial intelligence or quantum technology, but you can cite uh, many others. Uh, and this is uh, what we are testing already now, as you know, with the publication of various scores. The second area on which uh, we would like uh, to uh, provide more means to our innovators uh, in Europe is on the second leg, if I can use this word, of the European Innovation Council, and where we have our main weaknesses in Europe, which is this capacity to provide means to our deep tech-oriented uh, startups and SMEs for their rapid scale-up. Europe is able to create startups. I mean, in the last two years, in fact, Europe has created more startups than the United States. So the issue is not really the generation of new technology, not really the capacity to create startup, uh, which does not mean that we have not to invest, but to provide the means uh, to the scaling up of those startups. Because in comparison to the US, for example, as you know, uh, we are representing only 8% of the unicorns in the world, while the US are around 60%. And you have the huge emergence uh, in this area also of ASEAN, ASEAN country, in particular China. There, uh, as you know, the growth of a company uh, is not only uh, uh, provided uh, by uh, commercial activities, which is at the art, of course, uh, of the DNA of an enterprise, but can also be provided by an increase of its capital, in particular, in moments where the company is not yet able to create revenues because it has still to invest in the development and the validation of its technology before being able to attract private investors and to create the first condition for commercial activities. 
This is this particular segment that we would like to tackle with the second leg of uh, the EIC, which is the EIC accelerator, where we would like to provide our deep tech oriented startup and SMEs, not only with grant support, like we are doing it with a lot of success uh, in Horizon 2020 in the former SM instrument, uh, but where we would like also to use the op to give the opportunity to uh, those startups that are at the moment of the possibility of scaling up, that are at the moment where they have to invest a lot, but are desperately looking for um, support provided by investors, uh, with in addition to a grant, an equity support. We have launched for this uh, also uh, a pilot, as you know, uh, with a number of deadlines starting with the 9th of October and four other in 2020, uh, in, in order to pave the way to an even more ambitious approach uh, post-2020 in the context of Horizon Europe. But this, of course, uh, is not sufficient. This is not sufficient because it's not only uh, with money that you are making a change. And in particular, if you want to accompany the growth of startup, what is very and absolutely needed is to have uh, a very attractive, a very favoring environment and ecosystem. This is why we will accompany, and we are already accompanying, but we will intensify these uh, accompanying measures. Um, the support, we are accompanying the support to our beneficiaries with a number of business acceleration services. Uh, you can name them, uh, mentoring, coaching, uh, the possibility to meet large corporates in their area uh, or in their domain, the possibility also uh, to meet uh, some public procurer uh, in the pre-preparation uh, pre pre of uh, innovative procurement and other types of uh, partnership of this kind, uh, including uh, a reinforcement uh, and a test, they are also a pilot, uh, of uh, the EIC with uh, some of the knowledge and innovation centers, the kicks of the EIT, and in particular the one dedicated to energy and very likely the one dedicated to climate in this uh, short period of one year and a half before the end of the current framework program with the ambition post-2020 to have something covering all the kicks, but also any other actors and in particular the innovation agencies. Allow me also to uh, say a word on the need also to have, by definition, uh, a new management mode and a new governance mode. Um, if we want to succeed uh, in this initiative, which is, as you have understood it, very ambitious, we need also to change uh, the way uh, we are providing the governance to this type of program and the way we are managing, in fact, the project we are supporting. Starting with the governance, as you know, we have uh, appointed Commissioner Moedash and uh, Director General Jean-Éric Paquet and Roberto Viola have appointed uh, the first uh, EIC advisory board, uh, which is led uh, by Mark Ferguson, which is composed of uh, 22 very high level uh, professional in the area of uh, research, technology, venture capital uh, and, uh, and uh, innovation ecosystem. Uh, they will advise the Commission on how to uh, provide even more efficient, more relevant tools in order to tackle the issue uh, we have uh, to uh, tackle in the context of uh, the EIC. Uh, they met already last week uh, and uh, they are already working hard in order to provide this advice uh, during that they will continue to provide uh, during the next uh, two years. Uh, more importantly, maybe uh, than the governance, which is of course of key importance, is the way we are managing the project we support. Uh, in this context, uh, we have decided to move uh, to a more tailor-made support. Uh, if you want to provide real added value to our beneficiaries, it's absolutely necessary to have within the Commission people which have a perfect knowledge of the area, recognized knowledge of the area, uh, which have also an important knowledge regarding uh, management of enterprise, entrepreneurship, uh, skills regarding uh, and connection regarding investments. Uh, those people are of course very rare, but they exist. 
they are used already in a number of agencies in the world, in particular in some American agencies such as uh, DARPA or RPAE. Uh, they are called uh, program managers and we have decided uh, to uh, use the opportunity of this pilot also uh, to hire our first program manager. We have published um, uh, a call for expression of interest uh, before the summer. We have received an important number of candidatures, more than 200. And we will select by the end of the year our first five program managers, the first five EIC program managers, who will be really uh, the person in charge uh, to accompany the beneficiaries of our project within the NNCIC pilot and in the future within the EIC uh, program uh, and to provide them with an additional added value in complementarity to the uh, business acceleration services that I was just uh, evoking. As you see, it's uh, a really ambitious uh, uh, initiative. For that reason, I would like also uh, to underline that uh, the Commission moves fast. You have certainly uh, seen that uh, the organigram of DG Research and Innovation has been uh, modified recently and has uh, created a task force dedicated specifically to the EIC with a strong partnership uh, with a colleague of DG Connect. Uh, and now uh, we are working hand in hand, uh, the two DGs, the two agencies that are directly involved in order to build and to ensure that on the 1st of January 2021, the EIC will be uh, a reality fully within the context of a dedicated uh, structure together with an investment fund that, as you know, we are also establishing in the context of this pilot. I uh, would like to uh, ensure you of uh, our availability for uh, any question you may have. Uh, you will have the chance to have uh, one of my colleagues, Ifa Mangan, in front of you today. Uh, I recall uh, all my apologies for not being able to be here, but I'm sure that with Ifa you will have all the necessary answers to all the questions you may have today. Uh, and again, uh, we are at your disposal uh, in order uh, to create the condition for making the European innovators world leaders again. Thank you very much.